Did you know? Aaron, Lyron, and Agron are partly based on a mythical creature prominently featured in Korean fables. This beast, known as the Bulgasari, would eat iron and grow from the size of a bug to the size of a house, causing havoc. The Agron line of Pokémon reflects this. Aaron's Pokédex entry in Pokémon Ruby states, To make its body, Aaron feeds from iron ore that it digs from mountains. Aaron is also small, being only about a foot tall, and ultimately evolves into the almost seven-foot-tall Agron. Although these Pokémon are inspired by the myth Agron's design might be directly based on a theatrical depiction of the monster. Polgasari is a 1985 movie made in North Korea. The film shows the titular creature creating destruction after being summoned by an imprisoned blacksmith. Polgasari in the movie is a giant beast with horns on its head, plating on its shoulders, and a thick sweeping tail, just like Agron. What's also interesting about the movie is that it was produced by Kim Jong-il, the former dictator of North Korea. Kim actually kidnapped the director of the movie and his wife and forced them to make the movie alongside several others. It was it wasn't until after making seven films for Kim that the two managed to escape. Although nowhere near as extreme as Pulgasari's production, the development for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire also had its issues. The shift from Game Boy to Game Boy Advance presented some problems for Pokemon's developers. While the Advance brought new possibilities to Game Freak, those possibilities also came with greater resource costs compared to the previous games. To lessen the workload, Ruby and Sapphire retained the simple art style of the Game Boy games. If the world became more realistic, it would mean more detailed, time-consuming art would have to be made. The backgrounds for the battle screens were kept simple as well. If the battle areas were over-detailed, they would resemble specific locations in the overworld rather than a generic theme. By making them vague, the team could also use them in a wide range of locations rather than specific spots on the map. An increased workload wasn't the only problem the games faced. At the beginning of development, the series' public perception was at an all-time low, with many denouncing Pokémon as a fad or anticipating a sharp decline in popularity. Junichi Masuda, Ruby and Sapphire's director, even recalled seeing large amounts of Pokémon products disappearing from toy stores and being replaced with the latest Star Wars figures. The pressure of seeing this actually gave Masuda help issues, and he needed a gastroscopy due to stress-related stomach pains. Nevertheless, he resolved to prove the critics wrong and continue the series. Masuda planned for Ruby and Sapphire to be the launching point for the next few games in the series. He always intended to follow it up with a fourth generation, and hoped to be able to remake the original games in between so that players could transfer older Pokémon to the new games. Masuda's plan was instantly at risk after discovering the titles Ruby and Sapphire might be unavailable due to copyright issues. The region of Hoenn was based on Kyushu, the southernmost major island of Japan. Masuda's grandparents lived in Kyushu, and he created Hoenn in an attempt to recapture many of his experiences vacationing there. A lot of this time was spent fishing and hunting for insects, just as the player does in Pokémon. Masuda even snuck in one of his family members as a cameo. Kiri is a girl in Sidopolis who will give the player two berries daily. The character is named after Masuda's daughter, who was born as Ruby and Sapphire neared completion. There was only debugging work left to do at the time of her birth, so it would have been risky to implement a new character. Nevertheless, Masuda secretly programmed the character into the game. Although Masuda would have some fun developing the game, the lingering pressure would still affect him. The day the day before the games released, Masuda had nightmares about it failing. The art team got the inspiration for many of the new Pokémon from animal encyclopedias, their own childhood experience, as well as cartoons and movies. These Pokémon were designed with a more unique look than in previous generations, but without overstepping boundaries or betraying Pokémon's design philosophy. Ruby and Sapphire included only 202 of the total 386 Pokémon. Choosing this number was difficult, as the developers had to balance the creature variety against the difficult of completing the Pokedex. They also had to strike a balance between introducing new creatures and including enough old favorites to satisfy fans. Another issue was that every time they'd create a new, strong Pokémon, they'd need to create a counter for it as well. The team were also wary of making the new Pokémon overpowered, as that might encourage players to use only a single member of their team. Concept art for Ruby and Sapphire show different designs for Torchic, Trico, and Groudon, as well as a strange Pokémon that appears to be a combination of Latias and Blaziken. Other ideas that didn't stick include a feature where a Pokémon would make a different cry depending on its state. A healthy Pokémon would make a happy cry, where a sad Pokémon would sound different, but this idea had to be dropped due to memory restrictions. 
Game Freak considered changing core conventions of the series, such as the number of Pokemon players could have in their party, and the number of moves each Pokemon could learn. After some experimentation, they decided to stick with the original mechanics, as changing them didn't make the games more fun. Ruby and Sapphire's internal list of Pokemon is in a completely different order than the final Pokedex. It seems that Chimiko was a late addition to the games, as it's the final creature to appear on the list, even after the legendaries. There's also evidence that double battles against wild Pokemon were planned to be in the game, as the feature is referenced by a string of text in the game's files. Wild double battles would eventually be featured in later games in the franchise. Ruby and Sapphire were also planned to have additional weather effects for the overworld, including a unique snow effect, suggesting the game was planned to have a snowy area. This is further supported by an unused type of trainer called Border, whom were likely snowboarders. Tracks from Pokemon Gold and Silver can also be found on the cartridge, which are remixed using Ruby and Sapphire's sound font. However, it is possible that they were just used to test the game's audio. This seems to be a tradition in the series, as Diamond and Pearl also include a remix of the Ruby and Sapphire title theme in their files. The games also have several regional differences. Ruby and Sapphire have three decorative dolls based on Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, and Reggie steel that can only be obtained through the use of the GBA's e-reader peripheral. The e-reader cards for these dolls were only released in Japan, making them elusive in the West. The Japanese versions of Ruby and Sapphire also contain some minor issues and glitches that were fixed in other versions. While riding the acrobike along the beach in the Japanese versions, it's possible for players to bring up the option to surf. By doing so, the player is able to surf on land, which can only be undone by entering a building. In the beginning of Ruby and Sapphire, the player character's family moves into a new house with the help of a few Machoke. In the Emerald version, these Pokémon were changed to Vigoroth, but developers mistakenly still used Machoke's cry in the Japanese version. Not all of the game's glitches could be fixed for the international versions. In Ruby and Sapphire, any time the player attempts to sell 256 or more of an item, no matter how much money the game says is being paid out, the actual amount will be zero. This means if the player attempts to sell 257 berries, for example, the amount will roll over and they'll only be paid for one berry. Speaking of berries, Ruby and Sapphire possesses the honor of having the first glitch in the series to be fixed via an official update. Due to an error with the game's internal clock, daily events such as gifts from NPCs or the growth of berries on trees will simply stop. The clock keeps track of the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second, but the years, months, and days are converted into a single day counter. The year, month, day conversion function has a flaw, however, and years are only counted after the first year has ended. So, after a year of play, the counter goes back to zero. Because berries are programmed to grow according to the amount on the day counter, if the player planted any berries on the last day of the year, the game won't make the berries grow any further until the counter reaches the same value when the seeds were planted, which takes another entire year. This is infamously known as the berry glitch, due to the fact that most players notice it when the berries stop growing on trees. The glitch was a big enough problem that Nintendo issued an update specifically to fix it. There were several ways for players to receive this update. In Pokemon Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald, holding down both the Select and B buttons on the title screen will allow the update to be transferred to a copy of Ruby or Sapphire through a link cable. Connecting the games to Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Box, or PAL builds of Pokemon Channel will download the update automatically. Certain Nintendo GameCube demo kiosks also came with an option to download the update to a connected copy of Ruby or Sapphire. If the player opted to go through the kiosk option, they'd be gifted a shiny Zigzagoon. And lastly, if none of these options were available to the player, they could simply mail their copy of the game to Nintendo, who would update their game and send it back. If you're anything like us, summertime usually means a lot of traveling for vacations and gaming conventions. And a great way to enhance your travels is with audiobooks from Audible. Audible has an unmatched selection of audiobooks that cover documentary, comedy, fiction, erotica, sci-fi, and pretty much anything else you could imagine. Did you know gaming recommends both 101 amazing facts about the Nintendo SNES and 101 amazing Nintendo NES facts to pass the time? Or if you want something more in-depth, we also suggest Super Mario, How Nintendo Conquered America. If you're interested in these easy-to-consume books, you can start a 30-day free trial and get your first audiobook free at audible.com slash dyk, as seen on screen. Or if you're in the United States, you can also text an uppercase DYK to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash DYK, or you can text DYK to 500-500. 
An Audible membership includes one free audiobook per month, exclusive sales, and 30% off all regularly priced audiobooks. And you can listen to your books at any time, from anywhere, right from your phone. Did you also know that Brock wasn't originally the first gym leader in Pokemon Red and Blue? Or that several Pokemon characters had their identities altered to avoid controversy in the West? For more facts, check out our video on Pokemon secrets and censorship. If you liked this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. And if you're interested, check out our documentary on the life and work of Satoru Iwata, made by yours truly. He had a larger influence on the Pokemon franchise than you might imagine.